I really do wonder where this conversation is going to go. Um, in the last five years or so, we've witnessed a series of admissions from various departments of the US government, most notably actually the US Navy, in relation to UFO sightings and incursions over uh, sensitive military sites and training ranges. US Navy pilots have come out on the record to acknowledge their experiences. Video footage has come out as well of these encounters, and it's been officially acknowledged by the Department of Defense. And we're, we're now in a moment where... A push for transparency on what the US government really knows about UFOs has become a bipartisan talking point within Congress. The desire to learn more about this phenomenon has uh, galvanized public, scientific, political interest, and it's continuing to grow. And uh, you touched on it briefly, but there is a particular facet of this interest in the UFO subject that started to rise in its prominence to the point at which it's actually been discussed in an official congressional hearing in DC. So I would like to ask you, just a few questions about um, a series of documents. I'm going to explain for those of you listening who don't actually know about them. Um, a series of documents that found their way into the public domain after they were discovered in the files of the now deceased Apollo 14 astronaut, Dr. Edgar Mitchell. Uh, I was born and raised, I rather was raised in the vicinity of Roswell. And my family knew many of the people uh, involved in the so-called Roswell incident. And even though it's been was hushed up by our government, uh, those people have continued to their dying day to swear that it was real. And I, because of my astronaut status, many of the people involved in the early days, I called them old timers. They were military people, intelligence people that uh, were involved in the early uh, investigation of UFO experiences. And they, uh, uh, I was privileged to be briefed by them. And they told me because they were under security oath, but they wanted to get it off their chest before they passed on, that these were real things. And in addition to that, I was briefed at our Pentagon because I'd asked some questions there. Uh, a few years ago, and had, was a brief to high-level officer on what I knew, and he uh, said, well, I don't know about that, but I will find out. And he called me a few weeks later and said, you're right on, these things are real. I, I should be in charge of that, but I'm not. Well, and the documents, or more accurately, the, uh, the transcript, because these are not, not actually government documents of any form, it's a private, private set of papers, and, uh, and these papers are a transcript of a conversation that allegedly took place between a government astrophysicist, a man named Dr. Eric Davis, and a former director of the Defense Intelligence Agency, a man named Admiral Thomas R. Wilson. And uh, the transcript of notes that were allegedly taken during this meeting describe a conversation between Admiral Wilson and Eric Davis that involves the Admiral's alleged attempts to gain access to actionable intelligence within the Pentagon in relation to programs that may be hiding information on UFOs. And uh, during this alleged conversation that it's described within these now public notes, Admiral Wilson tells Eric Davis about a series of programs that he discovered hidden deep within the Black Project's records of the Pentagon that were actively involved in attempts to reverse engineer a recovered craft or a vehicle of some description that they believed could operate in air, sea, space, and perhaps even other dimensions with the conclusion of the program directors being that this was not man-made, not made by human hands. Now, this transcript has been floating around online for a number of years, with a, a, a pretty wide divide being created within the research community in regards to their overall legitimacy. And although behind closed doors, one of the individuals involved has confirmed their legitimacy, and those closest to the story have vouched for their accuracy, there has been a recent shift towards public acknowledgement. This was made clear when a man named Dr. Gary Nolan, one of the world's leading geneticists who works closely with Eric Davis, openly acknowledged his belief that the transcript of this meeting is indeed legitimate. And he said this to millions of people during an interview on Fox News. And uh, he even acknowledged how he had briefed a sitting congressman, a man named Mike Gallagher, on this transcript. And, uh, and Mike Gallagher then brought these documents to an official congressional hearing on UFOs. These documents are actually now available to download off of the U.S. Congress's own website. And then finally, are, are you aware of a document that appeared around uh, 2019, uh, sometimes called the Admiral Wilson Memo or EW Notes Memo? I am, I am, I am not. You're not. Are you I'm not personally aware of that. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, this is a document in which, again, I'm not commenting on the veracity. Uh, I was hoping you would help me with that, in which a former uh, head of DIA claims mm -hmm. to have had a conversation with the Dr. Eric Wilson uh, and claims to have uh, sort of been made aware of certain um, contractors or, or DOD programs um, that he tried to get uh, fuller access to and was denied uh, access to. Um, so you're not aware of, of that? I'm not aware, Congressman. Uh, in my 10 seconds remaining, then, I, I guess I just would ask Mr. Chairman unanimous consent to enter that memo into the record. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it. I would not expect you to be able to confirm the legitimacy of the transcript itself or whether the meeting actually took place because the alleged meeting has nothing to do with you in a direct sense. However, your name is mentioned in these documents and so for the sake of clarification, I think it's important that we just get your side of this on the record. So I would just like to be able to ask you, first of all, whether or not you personally know Dr. Eric W. Davis. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't work with him uh, day in and day out, but I did work with him. I, I know him fairly well. May I ask how you uh, first got to know him? Uh, in mutual projects, uh, mm -hmm. mutual acquaintances, uh, meetings, things of that sort. And do you personally know Admiral Thomas R. Wilson? Yes, I do. But a big, again, uh, I know him, and of course I know of him, um, mm -hmm. but um, I, I read somewhere that his response was, Oak who? <laughs> and I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, and, you know, as I mentioned to you, I, I consider myself eminently forgettable. Uh, so <laughs> so I, I'm sure that uh, my memory of him is, is stronger than his memory of me because mm -hmm. he's, he became a, a flag officer. I went off and did weird things on top of a, a mesa in New Mexico. So, <laughs> uh, and uh, so I would expect uh, that he would he would not remember me as well as I remember him. Did um, Did Admiral Wilson get in contact with you in two thousand and one or two thousand and two, inquiring into the background and overall trustworthiness of Dr. Eric Davis? Uh, earlier than that. Was it earlier than uh, that? My apologies. Yeah. No, it's um, well. We were we moved to uh, Florida in 2000, and Linda is listening in the background, so she can yell at me and tell me <laughs> if I'm wrong. Hey, Linda. 2001, 2001. Um, I had had a heart attack uh, and had actually died on the ICU table, um, and and had my own out of body experience. By the way. Yes, I, I want to talk to you about that a little bit later on. Absolutely. Um, but um, I was eventually uh, forced to retire medically because I, I could not get back in the saddle, uh, even remote uh, work. Um, and I was at home. I was had several complications out of that experience, out of that problem, uh, kept recurring uh, over the months this was in like may of 99 honey uh, yes. yeah may of 99 um and throughout the summer i was having these other problems being cropped up uh, for that and and so i was at home actually i was actually writing uh trying to write a novel about the destruction of the twin towers <laughs> this was in 1999 uh, I had to trash that when the when it actually happened. Wow! Um, but um, I got this phone call, uh, and it was from uh, Admiral Wilson, and he asked me. Now, this was not a short conversation. That you know, I I was recuperating. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to carry on this conversation on the phone, but I wasn't able to do much else at that point. Um, and we had a discussion. And one of the things he wanted to know was, could he trust um, Eric Davis? And I think he may have even mentioned Hal Putoff um, and one or two other people. And um, I, I mentioned that, yes, I believe that, that Eric Davis was an honorable and, and conscientious scientist uh, and that he would honor any, any restrictions the Admiral might put on him. Uh, and I, I thought it would be safe for him to contact him. Did he, uh, did he say at all why he was seeking that background information during, during your conversation? 
No, he really didn't. No, but you did. Not um, to my memory. Not right, to my memory. Right. I do not recall that he's. And I think I would recall that. If yeah. He'd said, yeah. If he'd said, <laughs> I want to check on the little green men, I would have said, oh, okay. Yeah, certainly, <laughs> certainly would have recalled but, that. Davis does other things than that, you know. Oh, yeah. He did. Oh, yeah. He's a, he's a brilliant scientist and a brilliant mind. Yeah. Um, but just, yeah, so he did call you up. He did ask about Eric Davis, and you did subsequently vouch for Dr. Eric Davis in response to his, uh, that, yeah. That's a good way to put it, I vouch for him. All right, and uh, just one last question on, on these notes. And to be fair, you have actually already glossed over this, but I just wanted to kind of get it in a confirmatory statement. So in, in these notes that were recovered from uh, Dr. Edgar Mitchell's estate, uh, that are a transcription of an alleged meeting that took place between Admiral Wilson and Dr. Eric Davis, it's mentioned within the trans transcript of their conversation um, that you were difficult to get in touch with at the time because you were in poor health due to heart conditions and were not easy to get hold of. So this this is actually, uh, this is true in of itself. You were struggling with that. Yes, I mean, it was difficult to get in, in touch with. And I might, I might add to that, I'm still difficult to get in touch with. <laughs> Uh, if you call me and and you don't identify yourself on on, on the identifying uh, stuff on the phone, mm -hmm. we don't bother. Yeah. Uh, if you don't leave a message, uh, too bad. 